In Bogota, Colombia, there's a meeting happening between the notorious drug lord, Don Luis, and his associate, Fabio. Fabio wants to leave the criminal life behind and start fresh with his family. Being the record keeper for the cartel, Fabio hands over a disc containing all the gang's business dealings to show his loyalty. However, once Fabio leaves, Don Luis secretly gives the order to have him killed. Fabio quickly returns to his car, aware that he only has about an hour to escape. He and his men race back to their territory. In a hurry, Fabio finds his wife Alicia and daughter Catlia, urging them to pack their belongings. He hands Catlia a memory card, telling her it's her passport, and gives her the address of her uncle Emilio in Chicago. He instructs her to go straight there once she arrives in America. Lastly, he gives her her mother's Catlia orchid necklace. In a rush, the family gathers their luggage and tries to leave, but their exit is blocked by men who have arrived outside. Realizing they are trapped, Fabio and Alicia grab their weapons. At that moment, Don Luis's men open fire on Fabio's men at the gate, killing them all. Alicia manages to say a brief goodbye before she and Fabio rush outside to engage in a gun battle with the attackers. Meanwhile, Catalia, their daughter, sits in silence, witnessing the tragic events. First, she sees her mother being gunned down, followed by her father meeting the same fate. Amidst a barrage of bullets in his final moments, Fabio gestures to Catalia, signaling her to swallow the card. With both her parents dead, Catalia remains seated as Don Luis's men, led by his enforcer Marco, enter the house. One of the men approaches to kill Catalia, but Marco intervenes and sends him away. Marco introduces himself as a close friend of Fabio, even daring to consider himself part of the family. He tries to justify why he had to murder Catalia's parents in front of her, but she silently nods in response. Marco inquires about the memory card, and Catalia confirms she knows about it. He reaches out his hand to collect it, but instead of handing him the card, Catalia surprises him by pulling out a knife and stabbing him in the hand. She then swiftly escapes through a window, swinging her way to the ground and fleeing. Marco and his men give chase as Catalia runs through the crowded streets, desperately trying to save her life. They come close to capturing her but lose her when she hides inside an empty tank. After emerging from the tank, Marco and his men attempt to corner her, but she manages to escape into the sewer system. Emerging from the sewer in the heart of the city, Catalia navigates her way to the U.S. Embassy. There, she meets with an official and explains the situation, mentioning the memory card. When asked to show the card, Catalia forces herself to vomit on the man's desk and hands over the card once he recovers. As he examines the card, he begins questioning Catalia about how she obtained it, but all she can say is that it's her passport. Upon arriving in the United States, Catalia is granted asylum and provided with some money. Initially, they plan to place her in foster care, but during the journey, Catalia seizes the opportunity to escape. She embarks on a long journey to Chicago, reading her favorite Xena comics along the way. Finally reaching her uncle's address, she shows a man the note her father left for her. The man goes to inform her uncle, and when Catalia sees her uncle Emilio, a wave of relief washes over her, and she breaks down in tears, finding solace in his embrace. It's the first time she has cried since Emilio believed the entire family was dead, and she is grateful to see her uncle, feeling like she has finally found home. The next morning, Catalia wakes up and joins her new family for breakfast in the kitchen. She inquires about the room she slept in and learns that it belonged to Emilio's late son, which saddens him. Emilio reassures her that the people responsible for his son's death are no longer alive. He notices a drawing Catalia made of Zena and admires her talent, asking if she wants to be an artist. However, Catalia responds by expressing her desire to become a killer, asking Emilio for his help. Surprisingly, Emilio agrees to assist her. He enrolls her in school, and she is accepted. After leaving Emilio, Catalia appears upset about having to go to school instead of pursuing a life as a killer. In response, Emilio unexpectedly fires his gun at a passing car, emphasizing that being a killer without intelligence will lead to her demise. He asserts that only school can teach her the necessary skills to succeed and gives her a reluctant choice, which Catalia eventually agrees to. Fifteen years later, during a lunch break, two police officers have their cruiser crashed into by a seemingly intoxicated Catalia. They promptly arrest her and bring her to the police station. A frustrated officer processes her and orders her to have coffee to sober up. Shortly after, a team of U.S. Marshals arrives at the station with a dangerous criminal for an overnight stay. They secure the criminal in his cell leaving one guard to keep watch. Catalia is brought her coffee and, once alone, swiftly changes into a tight-fitting suit. She picks the lock to her cell, diverts a nearby camera, takes a spoon from her coffee cup, fills a cup with water, and proceeds to the electrical room. There, 
She constructs a time device to disrupt the power supply before crawling into the ventilation system. As the time contraption triggers, cutting off the power, she squeezes through the vent just in time before a guard restores the power to the criminal cell. Taking advantage of the distracted guard's bathroom break, Catalia knocks him unconscious and acquires his gun. Calmly, she enters the criminal cell, wakes him up, and orders him to unbutton his shirt before shooting him dead. The sound of the gunshots alarms both the cops and the marshals, who rush back to find the guard awakening. They apprehend him and start searching for an intruder. Catalia manages to evade the pursuing cops by using darkness and her agility to slip away. She returns to her cell just as the marshal bursts in, only to discover her seemingly sound asleep. The following day, FBI agent James Ross and his team arrive at the station. He examines the dead man's body, noting a peculiar drawing on his chest that matches the signature of a notorious killer they have been tracking for years. He arrives at the police station and initiates a lockdown, but Catalia manages to evade them and escape. She contacts Emilio to confirm the kill before catching a bus back home. Meanwhile, Ross is trying to piece together the details of the murder and orders information on everyone who was in or out of the station. Later, he discusses the case with Agent Williams, noting that there have been 22 murders with the same modus operandi in the past seven years. They suspect that the killer is trying to send a message and decide to release the drawing to the public in the hope that the intended recipient will recognize it. In a different scene, CIA agent Richard arrives at Don Luis's American villa and shows Adon the published drawing, explaining that it used to be Fabio's signature. Don Luis denies any involvement in the killings, so Richard warns him that if he doesn't find out who is responsible, their deal to protect him will be compromised. Richard leaves, and Don Luis is angry with Marco for allowing Catalia to live. Ross and his team narrow down the list of people present at the station during the murder and demand a 10-year history on each of them. Catalia visits her boyfriend Danny, showing little interest in conversation as she seeks physical intimacy. The next morning, she leaves before Danny wakes up and meets with Emilio. He tells her that her mother misses her and wants to see her again. He hands her the next target, a man who stole money from dangerous individuals and needs to be eliminated. Emilio shows Catalia the newspaper with her drawings and warns her about the danger her pursuit of revenge could bring to her family. He wants her to stop, but Catalia is determined to continue seeking her revenge. Ross discovers that the drawing is of a Catlia orchid, which is native to Colombia. He attempts to gather more information from the CIA database but encounters restricted access. Catalia goes to another safe house where she has trained two large dogs to attack on her command. That night, she observes the target at his home, surrounded by his guards and requesting additional security. A van full of guards arrives, and Catalia sneaks inside. She enters the house using a glass-covered pool with two sharks, but decides against harming any of the girls she encounters in the process. Catalia reveals herself to the target as he wakes up, seeing the orca drawing on his chest. Panicked, he discovers that all his guards are dead and makes his way to the pool, where he finds an orchid placed in the middle. Catalia emerges from the shadows and shoots him in both legs, causing him to bleed. She then shoots him again, causing him to fall into the pool and become shark food. Ross reaches out to Richard for help with the case, but Richard dismisses him and tells him to fill out a form and wait. Richard calls Marco in anger, urging him to handle the situation. Catalia visits Danny again and initiates physical intimacy, but this time Danny wants to have a conversation and learn more about her. Catalia, however, shuts down and avoids sharing personal details. They make out, but Danny asks her to let him take charge. The next morning, Danny takes a photo of Catalia while she is sleeping and offers her breakfast, but she hastily gets dressed and leaves. She goes to see Emilio, who shows her news of people killed in a bar, including his friend. Emilio is angry at Catalia for drawing too much attention and tells her that he is done working with her. He had always wanted a better life for her, but since she insists on going to war, he wants her to stay away from the family. Catalia breaks down in tears. Later, Danny meets with his friend and shows him the picture of Catalia. His friend, thinking he's helping Danny, sends the picture to a contact at the police station, asking for a background check on Catalia. This immediately alerts Ross, who locates the police station in Chicago. Catalia joins Emilio and Mama at church, deciding to give up her quest for revenge. Mama breaks down in tears, overjoyed to see Catalia. On their way back home, they express how proud they are of Catalia for finally maturing. Ross and his team arrive at the police station, matching the picture to Catalia and issuing a warrant for her arrest. Catalia is at home and calls Danny, wanting to meet up. He agrees, mentioning that he only had a picture of her while she was sleeping. Catalia senses danger and checks her cameras, seeing the police outside. She runs out of the apartment and into the stairway, while Ross and his team head to a room. Catalia goes to another room, retrieves a sniper rifle hidden in the ceiling, 
and sets charges on her door. As the team rushes into the room and sets charges of their own, Catalie blows her door at the same time, leaving the room empty. She makes it to the car park, shoots the cameras to cover her escape, and changes her appearance. She escapes through the railway. Catalie rushes to Emilio's place, only to find Mama dead from gunshot wounds and Emilio tied to a chair, tortured and killed. She breaks down, crying and apologizing to them. Ross arrives home, only to find Catalie there. She orders him to sit on a chair rigged with pressure-sensitive bombs and demands his help. She plans to go after Louise, who is protected by the CIA, and she wants them off him. She threatens to target Ross's family if he fails to comply. She instructs him to wait until his microwave beeps before getting up, and then she leaves. The next day, Ross goes to talk with Danny, who still refuses to help. Ross receives a call from Catalie, who has a sniper rifle aimed at Danny. She warns Danny to provide Louise's address, and when he thinks he's safe behind the glass, she sends a warning shot to Danny, and he agrees to provide Louise's address. Catalie prepares for her mission, loading her guns and her dogs into an armored van. She holds an architect at gunpoint and obtains the plan to Louise's house. Meanwhile, Marco briefs his men about Catalie's stealthiness when a rocket suddenly destroys the front door, causing chaos. Despite the explosion, Marco, Louise, and a few men survive and rush to their cars to escape. However, Catalie rams them with her truck, eliminating some of the men. Marco takes Louise to a secret room and sets out to hunt Catalie. However, Catalie surprises him by opening fire from beneath the floor. Marco throws a grenade, causing a massive explosion that shakes the house. Some men investigate the lower floor, but Catalie has already made her way to the balcony, where she unleashes a barrage of gunfire on the remaining men. Marco and one guard hide while using another man as a distraction, only to hear him get killed by Catalie. A fight ensues between Catalie and Marco, with him managing to put her in a chokehold. However, she throws them both down, removes the slide from his gun, and uses it to stab him in the neck. Louise seizes the opportunity to escape and jumps into his van, driving away. He taunts Catalie, claiming he will hunt her down and escape. To his surprise, Catalie had placed her dogs in his van, and she gives the command for them to attack. The dogs kill Louise, and Catalie calls Danny, relieved to hear from him. Danny expresses his love for her, and they end the call before the agents can trace her location. Catalie then takes a bus away from the city, continuing her journey, leaving the events behind her. That's all from the video. Thanks for your time. And take care.